Welcome into another episode of Spiritual Philosophy Chatter with the Joneses. I'm Danny Jones. And I am Samantha Jones. And this is episode 199. Wow, 199. What's our topic today? This is, are you afraid to be happy? Cool. This is a common problem. Yeah. 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 So looking forward to talking about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Before we do, anything you want to talk about from last week? Yes, last week we did the sense of entitlement. And I actually have a response from Sunshine here, but I... Uh, did a reading on her dog a couple of weeks ago. She says, I was slacking and that was and was two episodes behind. I just listened to Duke's episode. Thank you for doing that reading. I wholeheartedly believe you, but it is still always baffles me that you get things so accurate. <laughs> and this episode is two weeks prior to me hearing it. And the funny thing is, I've been noticing him being calmer in new situations and around people he doesn't know. He stopped barking at the men at work he usually barks at, and he hasn't been barking at the garbage truck or golf carts. I'm I'm sad he knows I'm stressed because I try and play I'm okay for him, but he does such a good job taking care of me. He's been my shadow, cuddles extra hard, and I feel his patience with me. Funny he says he wants to do more fun stuff because we are currently at the beach. He is going to have so much fun. I'll make sure to take him on as many ventures as possible it's just been cold and snowy and dark solstice is coming and we have more daylight for adventure thank you so much samantha you're such a blessing so oh, thank you awesome. sunshine yeah Thanks, sunshine. and that happens a lot like uh in my in my reading group so when a reading comes into the group i it goes into like a queue and then i release you know like a few maybe like 10 to 20 a day something uh-huh. like that but if I see something come in and it has to sit there for a little while while the others are, are, you know, going in, I will talk to that animal and tell them what I can to at least try and help the situation at that point. So I get told this a lot. Oh, that makes sense. You already talked to him. That's why the behavior has changed. Right. So, yeah. I will agree with Sunshine. You are remarkably accurate <laughs> and talented in that area. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very blessed. I love being able to do that. So thank you, Sunshine, for that response. Thank you. And then today we have two questions here. The first one is from Amanda. She says, on rare occasion while meditating, I will feel like I'm spinning. I am not scared. It just feels like I'm just spinning, tumbling as if I'm in space. But all I see is darkness. I'm not sure what this means, if anything. And after she sent this to me, I said, you know, I want to talk to you about it and, and maybe answer it on the show. She It came to her that maybe it was because she's not grounding and shielding. But that's a part of meditation. So if you're just in that frame of meditation, you haven't come out of it yet. You sh- It shouldn't be because you haven't grounded and shielded yet. Uh, I used to have this sensation myself, not necessarily when when meditating but like i love to get massages and facials i don't so much anymore get to do that but i used to do it all the time and i would have that spinning sensation when i would be laying there Hmm. so i so i don't know what that was i look back at it and think maybe it was a sinus issue it doesn't happen anymore so you know maybe it's physical and not emotional but also it could just be that you're just not at that point yet like you just need to do some more deep breathing uh Amanda was worried that maybe there was some kind of negative energy or something. No, the only negative energy that you would feel is your own. Yeah. And so that's what I mean by you got to get rid of some more of that. So that's really the only things that I could think of in that case. Um, you know, I don't know if you have anything yeah. to add to that. No, I mean, that was kind of my first thought was like, do you maybe have like a sinus thing? Yeah. Like, so if you have water in your ears, they can almost create like a vertigo effect or if you even possibly had that but Mm -hmm. so it could be a physical thing but i think it's like um yeah like a breakthrough like letting yourself go yeah you're not there yet 
to a certain point, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, you still have more breathing to get to that point, and the meditation maybe is what it is. But you'll have to let us know if this, because she said it happens on a rare occasion, just every once in a while. But if it happens again, you'll have to let us know and and how you deal with it, and you know <clears throat> what you do to come out of that. So, right. so I hope that that helps a little bit. Thanks, Amanda. This next question is actually from quite a few people. I've had the same question thrown at me like four or five times this week and it's kind of a gross question but we're going to talk about it anyways Uh because i feel like maybe i can help some people but probably not because of the answer i'm gonna have anyways the question is can you please tell my dog dog to stop eating the other dog's poop (laughs) and the quick answer to that is no i can't um i can tell you this for a fact because it doesn't work ours well yeah mostly just one of them The both of the boys have a tendency to do this, but one of the boys on a very regular basis and they don't listen and I've tried everything. Um, One of the reasons that it doesn't work is because it's instinct. And that's why they don't understand when we get mad at them because they're like, what? I'm just doing what I feel is natural. Like in the wild wolves and coyotes and, and, you know, wild dogs, they will clean up after themselves so that they're not leaving you know, a trail. trail. Yeah. And so they eat the poop or, you know, there's a lot of reasons why they do it. Ooh. Yeah. But I presented this to the vet the last couple of times that she's seen Zuma and she's not the slightest bit concerned at all. And I'm like, can you just give me something, just something yeah. to help me because it's so nasty. Not really. <laughs> um, Is there I, doggy therapy for this one? Seriously. <laughs> Uh, no, the only thing that I've found to even slightly work is a substance that you put in their food called Forbid. And I think it has like a lot of yeast. It makes it unpalatable. I, the, I mean, <laughs> come on. What an oxymoron. It really is. <laughs> it really is. But I've tried all of those. Oh. Oh, you know, they sell them in the stores. That is the only one that has worked. But you have to give it to all of the dogs because they get sneaky. And then they go, oh, that dog doesn't have it in their food. I'll I'll eat that one. And then when I finally got that under control, then Zuma started eating dirt more. It was so he's like doing something for instinct, maybe for vitamins. But the vet doesn't seem to think it's vitamins. So I'm I don't know. But yeah, the animal communicator cannot fix this problem. I wish I could, but I I just can't. Um, You know, because it's not that kind of a problem. It's an instinctual yeah. thing. And, and yeah, or if it is some kind of vitamin thing, I really can't because that's like trying to tell you if you're thirsty not to drink water because it helps to quench the thirst. Right. And if this helps to make them feel better, like one of the people that asked this question, she said there's a lot of like churning and stuff going on and burping. Yeah. Same thing with Zuma. Yeah. And I brought that to the attention of the vet. And again, give him gas X. Oh, okay. I'll give that to him, but I'd rather solve the problem. You're not going to be able to is basically her answer. So I guess it is what it is. It's gross. And it's, you know, you just, you have to clean up. Yeah. That's the, that is like the most important thing is to clean up after your dogs. But like our, what we found with Zuma is he'll just go out there and do it. And you don't have time to clean yeah. it. <laughs> it's gross. Yeah. Sorry, the gross topic. I should have said if you don't like to talk about this, just fast forward in there for a few minutes. But yeah, it's really, really common. So I hope that that helps if, you know a few of our listeners because I do get asked that a lot. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so there's our two questions. All right. Uh, today our reading is for Gabe. I meant to tell you, Gabe. Uh, Gabe. Let's see. Let me go back to the reading here. So Gabe says, it's been over a year now. How's mom been? Her name is Alice. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. A year. It's gone by fast. It has gone by really fast. I'll show you a picture, Alice. Okay. All right. Let me connect to your mom. She's very happy, obviously. I mean, they all are, but she comes in immediately like, oh, good. I'm glad that we get to reconnect. I'm glad that... You know, a year later, a year that's gone by that he will still know that I'm really happy here and nothing's changed like that. It's not like, you know, spirits, they don't get homesick because like the they're home. the honeymoon doesn't end. Exactly. The honeymoon goes on for as long as you decide to stay there. Yeah. So she is, you know, still, <clears throat> yes, 
extremely happy. She's been to a lot of family events, she tells me. Uh, she loves to sit and listen to you guys talk about her to tell stories. She says sometimes your stories are not accurate um, <laughs> and that sometimes people will actually argue about who's right, whose version of the story is correct. And usually nobody's version of the story is correct, but she can't, you know, be there to That's interject funny. what actually happened. Our memories are really weird. They do weird things and like yeah. we make false memories and stuff. Yeah, and, you can. Yeah. So yeah, she says, so sometimes if neither one of the people that are saying, no, this is this story, you're both wrong is what she's saying. I'm <laughs> sure you'll understand what she means by that. Uh, she knows that not just yourself, but a lot of, your other family has had a really hard time with this, that she was kind of the glue that kept the family together in a way. And that that happens a lot. That happened with my mom too, that like when that glue kind of falls apart, it all falls apart. Yeah. And so people tend to like have issues or go different directions or whatever, but it's still really fresh. It's only been a year. So she says these things are going to work themselves out and, um, relationships that have been kind of strained or different since her passing uh, will get better. Um, okay, so now she's getting personal and says, you put a lot of stress on yourself. Uh, a lot of... Um, I think this is going to be a good episode for you because this is kind of going along with that, is that if you can't do the things that you want to do or feel the level you're supposed to feel about something, then you just don't do it. Instead of trying or going for it anyways, you're too worried about uh, what direction this is going to go. And I don't even know what she's talking about, but I'm sure you will. Uh, not to worry so much about things because she's in control of a lot of the things that are happening right now. And if you try and resist the changes that she's trying to bring into your life, then your life can't go the way that it's supposed to go. So she wants you to surrender just surrender to whatever it is that you're is thrown at you. Even if it seems like, why is this happening? Like, this is not at all the way I expected life to go. There's a reason. And yeah. she just wants you to surrender and go with that reason. Because uh, you will find out. Retrospect. Always. Mm -hmm. Always. Um, she loves you very much. Wants you to tell the whole family that she loves them, misses them, and is always around you guys. She loves to be around you when all of the family is there um, and she brings others with her because I see a lot of family on the other side. So wow. that's cool. So there you go, Gabe. Hope that that's helps awesome. a little bit. Thanks, Lucy and Gabe. Get Alice. Alice. Why did I say Lucy? I don't know. Okay. That's what I got for you. So we can give our info now. Very good. Before we go into the episode. Do it. So if you'd like to find me, I'm at Samantha Jones Psychic Medium .com. I have a radio show that airs every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on VoiceAmerica.com on the Empowerment Channel. You can find me there. And I had said last week, next week is our 200th episode, right and I'm going to give away a reading. Cool. So, and if you would like to enter for that reading, all you have to do is send me an email and just say, I want to enter for the reading at beyondthebridge11 at gmail.com. Very nice. Cool. And then for you. For my art, djonesartcollection.com for the web, at djonesartcollection for Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Fabulous. All right, then. Episode 199, Are You Afraid of Being Happy? It's funny because I actually wasn't thinking at all about doing this episode. And then randomly earlier this week, I came upon an article about a phobia called churophobia. Hmm. And churophobia is the fear of being happy. I really didn't even know that there was like an actual name. But hmm. I mean, it seems logical because there's hmm. a fear of everything, you know. Um, but this is something that I've struggled with my whole life. So I kept reading and thought that the topic would be super relatable to our reader, our listeners, of course. I'm yeah, sure. I think so. Yeah. So someone that has this churophobia isn't necessarily a sad person, but a lot of the time they like avoid activities that could lead to happiness or joy. So on the outside, the person might seem like they're happy, but on the inside, there's a lot going on inside of them. Mm -hmm. Although it isn't rational, many people subconsciously steer themselves away from experiences that feel good about themselves, makes them feel good about themselves or where they end up feeling happy. I asked our listeners this. I asked them, are you afraid to be happy? 70% <laughs> said no. 
And that's wonderful. I'm yeah. very glad to hear that. 21% said yes. And I'll be honest, myself included. Right. Uh, so, yeah. And then, let's see. With that, Nancy said that she's not afraid of being happy. And that on top of that, I am not afraid to tell anyone just how happy I am. And if they don't like how happy I am, they can exit my life with love and blessings. <laughs> if they are not happy and they want they want me to be happy, I can help with that too. And I totally agree with you, yeah. Nancy. Absolutely. I, I really try and emulate the same <laughs> thing of, you know, I want to bring you into the happiness that I yeah. have. And then Hillary said, yes and no. It's hard to let all the bad thoughts and self-sabotage go when things are doing really well. In a sense, yes, I'm afraid to be happy. But on the other hand, I know we deserve to be happy. And we are the ones that keep us from pure happiness. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And Chelsea said, I have a long, long-standing fear that once I attain a high level of happiness, my life will end. For example, after I completed my master's or married Steve, in my emotional needs, I felt my days were numbered. I still struggled, but catch it faster. That actually seems even crazier now that I wrote it out and admitted it publicly. Mm. I No, I, absolutely. Yeah. We all have these kind of weird things that come along with it of, uh, you know, things that go through our mind. I'm the same way. I, I have those types of I things. I think I'm too. more on the 70% side. Um However, uh, I don't know who said before, Chelsea, that, yeah, the thoughts of the past or trauma or mistakes can creep in. I try in my best, you know, in those moments to go, OK, yeah, it's it's humbling, yeah. you know, but it doesn't have to make me unhappy right now for this moment. Yeah. Like I, I'm choosing that. Mm -hmm. And. But I also see that angle of everything's going so smooth right now. Yeah. If if I let myself get settled into this place of happiness, it's like when the bad comes, it will be almost the contrast will be too much to handle. Right. So let's not be happy. So when the bad comes, the contrast isn't so ridiculously different. I totally agree with it's you. It's a weird mind game that we do with ourselves. And the other side has really tried to work with me on this, too. Like, I'm really trying to work on just living in the moment because that's really what it is about is living in the moment. And if you're living in the past, yeah. then you're living in what is it? You're living in your memories. If you're living in the past, you're living in your memories. And if you're living in the future, you're living in your imagination yeah. and you're not appreciating the moment. So I've really tried recently a lot to when I'm out doing something or, you know, there's a moment instead of like thinking about other things or worrying, I really try and stay in the moment and appreciate it because that's where your memories are made. Mm -hmm. And if you're worrying about all of the things that could be you're or that have been opportunities to make memories. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly right. Something else is that if you have those memories and you're constantly repeating them, you're like putting them more and more into your long-term memory. Yeah. I try, I really try hard to like those intrusive thoughts that come in about, oh my gosh, I did this, you know, when I was six years old or whatever, right. you know, it, I try and push those out. I actually, last night I woke up, I usually wake up about between two and four every night. And sometimes it's hard for me to go back to sleep. And I think I've talked about that. I play a little game in my head, uh, you know, like an alphabet game to try and help myself get back to sleep. Every once in a while, the intrusive thoughts win. And last night they won. And and they were just about things that I did when I was like in my early 20s before I knew any better. <laughs> and I'm like, what is the, You know, I kept catching myself. What are you doing? Right. Like, what does it matter? You you know, <laughs> that's so many years ago. Yeah. You can't go back and change it. Just go to sleep. Yeah. Like, why now? Right. <laughs> why at three in the morning? I just want to sleep. you're not doing sleep. anything. Right. <laughs> yeah. Are you busy? Let's have some thoughts. <laughs> But it, it is all mind control. It's it, it's us forcing ourselves to go, this is dumb. Why am I doing this? Like, yes. I can't change it no matter how much I want to try. I can't. Well, I think the more that I started to accept life as more of this really is about experience. Mm -hmm. This really is about it all. You know, 
coming into it and experiencing it all. And by that, I mean the happiness and the sadness Mm -hmm. and trying to, you know, program your mind in a way to see it, um, even if it's half full all the time, that it is, it's like a roller coaster. It's Mm going to go up and down. But when the lows are there, the next time that there's a happy spot, I can appreciate that much more after remembering where I just was. Yes. So that's helped me understand that it, to not be afraid of the things that come that are unpleasant. Yeah. Because they really are as important as the happy moments. They are. Believe it or not. They are very important. And they make you really appreciate and respect both sides Mm -hmm. yep equally i think yep absolutely we were just kind of saying this but my next in the notes it says uh sometimes chirophobia can stem from the belief that if something good happens or if a person's life is going too well that a bad event is bound to happen yeah as a result they may fear activities related to happiness because they believe they can ward off something bad from happening Right. This is often the case when something someone has experienced a past physical or emotional traumatic event. Absolutely, it's it's a part of like PTSD, yes. you know. Uh the night before my mom passed away, I was having a bad night. I kind of felt something. I didn't know what it was, but I couldn't stop crying and I was trying to find a reason as to why I was crying. Mm. And the reason that I came up with was money. So I went with it, you know, because I couldn't find any other reason why I was crying. And so I was talking to my mom about this and she was telling me, you know what, I think things are going to get better. I think that things are, are going to change. They're looking up, they're getting better. And I believed her. And I went to bed that night thinking things are getting better. They're going to get better. And then the next morning she died. And I'm not saying she died because I thought that things were going to go better. I'm just saying that right. my mind plays this game with me because this is sometimes how my abilities work that I have these kind of feelings. Mm-hmm. And then like if I'm not worrying about something, then something bad happens. Yeah. So I, I totally understand. And I think a lot of it is a tra- it's a trauma response. It, it is. And there's this fight or f- flight kind of instinct that, we all have Mm -hmm. and someone might be one side some might be the other but when it came to those bad moments or my own death or things that i were just going to be sad i found myself doing the flight Mm -hmm. i just don't want to think about it deal with it and run away from it but the more that i faced it as it is part of this experience meaning that we're all going to lose things and people pets loved ones parents um and then the next generation they experience the same Mm -hmm. nobody is unaccounted for in that area they we all have to experience it we do just like we will all experience being born or the birth of our child or somebody we know Mm -hmm. you know close to us a family member it's part of it And the more I could just face that, if I can get deep enough into it, like this happened to me earlier, um, before we were recording, I was setting up and today is our daughter's 18th birthday. Yes, it is. And I had a moment of, oh shit. Uh It just kind of all hit me when I was in here, you know, and just thinking about that. Yeah. And wow, when she goes on her own and how intensely emotional that will be for me, you know, to drive away and be like, ah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And then the thought of my own passing. Right. And her, you know, having to experience that. Yeah. But that's part of it. As sad as it is, it makes us closer. Yeah, it's true. Um, And there's so many more years in between all that for things to happen and experience. Yes. Um, for both of us, yep. both individually and together. Yep. Um, and some of those things are going to be sad and some of those things are going to be really happy. Yeah. So True, yeah. it is the experience. 
it, it the emotional part is what scares the daylights out of us. Yeah. But <laughs> what happened to me while I was setting up was I got, I sort of surrendered to that emotion. Yeah. And I could hear so loudly. Mm-hmm. Like, no matter what happens, it will be okay. Yeah. Everything will be okay. Yeah. No matter what happens. It's true. It, they weren't telling me, oh, this isn't, you know, you're not going to have to deal with this and that won't. <laughs> right. It just said no matter what happens, yes. everything will be okay. And it was like this feeling of something or someone wrapping their arms around me. Yeah. That's good. And just, and I said, okay. Yep. We were talking about this earlier, and we're both pretty emotional. <laughs> it's yeah. been an emotional day, so I got the little, <laughs> the tears and the tissues here. So um, we've talked about that we were told when Marina was about 14 that there was going to be a, an accident uh, Yeah. when she was 17. But we kind of didn't think it was her. We thought it was somebody else. But I think deep down inside, I always knew it was going to be her. Yeah. And so being told that this last year has been a nightmare for mm-hmm. me. Because I knew there was an accident coming. She's had two accidents in the last year, yeah. uh, her 17th year. And I was waiting for a third. Because I was making myself absolutely crazy waiting for a third. <laughs> because I I don't know why. I just... Yeah was uh so today she's not 17 anymore so although there's always the chance that (laughs) she could be in another accident at least i didn't predict it and i've i said to you i'm so glad that the bad things that happen to us normally we're not told ahead of time and now i know why so it was really weird to have those years of buildup but one of the ways that my abilities work is that and I really don't like this and wish I could change it, is that if I'm not worried about something at all, that's when I need to be worried. If I completely put it out of my mind, that's when something's going to happen or when I don't think about it at all. And that makes it very stressful for me. So I literally worried every single day while she was 17 that she was going to be in an accident, except the two times she was in an accident. It was the farthest thing from my mind. The second time, because that was the same time we had the flood in the house, and I was so busy thinking about that. Yeah, Yeah, totally preoccupied. Uh, But it really happened at times that I never, ever expected that it was going to happen. It was the farthest thing from my mind. And so that makes me very uneasy, and I really need to get... Find a way to get a hold of that, like figure out how to manage that better because it makes it hard for me to really allow myself to be happy and not worry. Like I feel like if I worry about something, then I don't, it's not going to happen. Yeah. And But that's a horrible way to live. <laughs> yeah. And I know there's a lot of people that right now are going, I understand that because they live the same way because I know that there are Yeah. for sure. So. Okay, back to my notes. Um, Also, if you grew up in a home where everyone felt and acted very negative, then it is probable that you currently view the world and yourself through a negative lens. That means that you are likely drawn to experience that end up making you feel bad about yourself or that confirm your preconception that the world is a bad place. My grandma was like the most negative person in the world, and it really did have an impact that I'm still trying to this day to kind of get rid of. Yeah, there was a lot of worry in my house. Yeah. Cold, you know. Yeah. Yep. If you are used to feeling bad about yourself, then it's also a more comfortable place to be in and easier to continue putting yourself in an unfulfilling situation. I don't know why that is, that it's almost easier to be negative and have worries than it is to just be happy. Why is that? It's weird. I don't know, but you're right. It's very strange. It's like self sabotage, really. Yeah. Uh, it all this the articles that I read. They also say that introverts are more likely to experience this fear of happiness. Yeah. An introvert, if you're not aware, is a person who prefers to do activities alone or with like one or two people. Separately. Uh, yeah, <laughs> in their own homes. <laughs> yeah, I'm very much an introvert, and I've converted uh, my husband here. 
He used to be an extrovert, and now he's just like me. Uh, yeah, where was I? I'm an introvert. Okay. They're often seen as reflective and reserved. They may feel intimidated or uncomfortable in group settings due to sensory overload because of loud places or places with a lot of people. Yeah. It's hard. It is really hard. Yeah. Um, yeah. Perfectionists also have a tendency to steer themselves away from happiness. Those who are perfectionists may feel happiness is a trait only lazy and unproductive people have. So as a result, they may avoid activities that could bring them happiness hmm. because those activities may seem unproductive. Hmm. And I can kind of understand that to a certain extent. It's like yeah. some days I work and I get like, you know, I, I just work for a couple of hours and I'm done and that's it. That's all I need to work. Uh, and then I feel bad about that, that I can go and just have fun and do whatever I want. I feel lazy, but it, it's like, but you've made your money for the day. And so right. go on with things, you know, Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I'm not a perfectionist though. That's for sure. Something else that I read about is the happiness flow. This happiness flow is, um, being involved in an activity so that your ego falls away and time goes by because when you are engrossed in something, that's when you know, you're out of your own head. Yeah. Your whole being is so involved in what you're doing and you're using your skills. So this uh, flow happiness happens when you are making, doing, creating, and or playing with things like hobbies, doing things that in your mind bring happiness, uh, sports, you know, creative endeavors, whatever. So having a hobby is very important. Having something that you can do to get away. And I think this is one of my problems because... Pretty much everything that I do is work related. Yeah. I need something outside of that, you know, to keep my mind busy when it's not yeah. working or we're, you know, doing something. Or, we've talked about that uh, Danny got a new car and so he's driving a lot lately since he got the new car and uh, that leaves my mind time. <laughs> I don't like it. It's like <laughs> then I start thinking about things and I, I miss driving because right. it's like that meditative kind of state, it is, you know. Yeah. So I also asked our listeners, let me go back to my screenshots here. Let's see. Which of these statements do you agree with? <clears throat> uh, the top one that 67% of people said is I do my best to be happy with my life, which is great. Mm -hmm. And then 18% said I prefer not to be happy because usually joy is followed by sadness. 9% said, something bad always happens when I'm too happy. And 6% said, being happy will mean something bad will happen to me. And Nancy said, I have a relatable story. When I was going through my divorce and I was at my lowest, my bestie told me, one day you're going to wake up happy. I said to her that it had been so long since I had that feeling I wouldn't recognize it anymore. She assured me that I would. I said to her that you can possibly wake up every morning. You can't possibly wake up every morning happy. She told me, yes, besides the occasional disappointment of someone stealing your parking space, she did wake up excited <laughs> and happy to greet the day. Even though I wanted nothing more than that, I wasn't sure that I believed her. She said, keep an open mind and heart and watch wow. it wasn't too much longer than that my good days outnumbered my bad days and then the next thing i know almost every day now when people say to me you can't possibly wake up every day happy i say watch and keep an open mind and heart you will see yeah. happiness is a choice and i choose it i hope this gives people hope when their dark days lack light i'm the same way i wake up every morning okay happy ready for the day uh, and then whatever's thrown at me that day, I try and, yeah. you know, I try and combat it. And, and if I can't, then some days are bad, but I try and make it so that some moments are bad. Right. It's not the whole day that's shot, but this is something that I have yeah. chose consciously to change because I used to wake up, uh, what fresh hell is today going to bring? Well, that's a psychological habit that we can get into. Yeah. And that's like a a thing of that is the best time I feel like to, to try to reprogram your mind or you have to stop it dead in its tracks. Yep. Call yourself out because it's the beginning of the day. Yes. You don't want to start it like that. And sometimes I do. Sometimes I wake up on the wrong side and I'm, I have to say, wait a minute, 
nothing's nothing's even happened. <laughs> you know, like yeah. this is the you're waking up. Yeah, this is the beginning of the day, and not looking at what. Um, I, if anything, I try to ask like, give me whatever challenge that I should have mm-hmm. that I can handle. Right. <laughs> yeah. And even that sometimes a little bit too much. But... Yeah. Uh, let's see. Hope said two thoughts. One, my ex used to tell me I was never happy. Fast forward to now and I understand why. It sure wasn't because of me. <laughs> Get that. Two, I think I'm more worried about whether everyone else is happy than whether I'm happy, which in turn makes me unhappy. Kind of a vicious cycle. Yeah. Absolutely. Empath. Heavy yeah, empath. absolutely. I totally understand. It's like, I want everybody around me to be happy. And if they're happy, so am I. And if they're not, then yeah, I'm kind of a little bit like, mm, but I'm working on that yeah. because I realize that I can't let people around me, you yeah. know, disturb my peace. And growing up with Hope, it was like she was always really funny. Yeah. Like she wanted everybody to be happy. Yeah. You know, and she is. She's, you, you're totally hilarious. That's a great quality to have. Yeah. Jessica said, I often get happy and satisfied, confused. Definitely understand there is a difference, but also that I can choose to be happy regardless of the circumstances. I just have to retrain my brain. I'm more afraid of being complacent than happy. I can understand that. Absolutely. It's, um, you don't have to be completely satisfied with your life for it to be happy. Most people are not entirely satisfied with their lives, but you choose to be happy in the areas that are good and that you yeah. want to be happy in. And even if you have a job that you don't like, you can still find reasons to be happy about yes. it. Um, it's all about mindset. It's all about perception. I really do think that it's not, you know, there's experiences in this lifetime that we all have to face, mm-hmm. but they don't have, they don't come, you know, pre labeled. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, I'll get dark here for a second. Um, To one person, somebody's death might be a happy moment. And to another person, it might be a tragedy. Right. Do you see the perception there? Yes, absolutely. So it's what we choose to allow it to do to us. Yes, that's absolutely right. But ultimately, we have a choice. We do. And that is with grief as well. Uh, I chose when my mom died to sit in that grief for years. I really did. It didn't. It wasn't necessary. It wasn't what she wanted. But for whatever reason, it was easier. It was just easier to be unhappy than it was to try and pull myself out of it. Mm. But I think one day I realized I don't really want to be like this anymore. Like yeah. I need a change in my life and had to pull myself out of it as hard as it was. Mm. But that's what the other side wants. That's what the universe wants is for us to be happy. Like that's... Mm-hmm. A big part of why we're here is to try and learn how to be happy despite the fact that there's always things that are going to try and knock us down. It's just life. And I wish somebody would have told me that when I was young. I wish somebody would have said to me, you will probably never come to a point in your life where things are completely 100% satisfying or happy. You know, there's always going to be something. There's always going to be hardships. Mm -hmm. I would have been more prepared for life. Because I said to you earlier that I feel like a lot of us believe if I could just get through the next couple of weeks, there will never be anything be smooth bad that ever sailing ends. sailing from then on. <laughs> what is that We about? all feed ourselves that line <laughs> at some point. Oh. And you know what? That's not the case because no. what in this world works like that? Right. Nothing. Yeah. Right. Nothing in this universe works like that. Yeah. It's got... You know, amazing things and then not so amazing things. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, The last comment here is from Diana. She said, I've come to my peace and my happy, but I have a lot of friends that struggle with this because they feel unworthy of happiness. It's setting themselves up for failure and hardships with that mindset, but they're not open to hearing that because the cause and effect of the subconscious mind. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It's true. It's, yeah. I think inside we're, we're taught a lot of us that we're not supposed to be happy. That I don't know. I don't know why that is that seems like the majority of people are, are not. Yeah. Yeah. So how can we go about trying to change this? Because I could definitely use some change in this area for sure. <laughs> 
the number one thing that we can do is live in the moment. And like I was saying before, the past and the future, they don't exist. You're living in your memories or imagination. You're not living in the present. That's a good, good first advice. Yes, I think so. Practicing mindfulness. Mindfulness is maintaining like a moment by moment awareness of like what's going on. Our thoughts, feelings, um, surroundings, everything. It's noticing even the smallest of things because that makes us more mindful of what's around us um it's living in the moment being grateful for everything in every moment so that's another way becoming more self-aware it this has been a major shift for me like i never really examined myself before the spiritual awakening And now I do. I examine everything that I do. I'm very self-aware about what's going on in my head. Even if I'm not always responding exactly the way I'm supposed to, Mm. I'm always aware of what's going on. And the biggest obstacle with that is being honest with yourself. It's telling yourself that you're not always right. You're not always in the right. You do wrong. You say the wrong thing. You act the wrong way. Whatever those things are. And you have to be self-aware of them. And it's not easy. But when you are able to do that, I'm telling you, it makes life easier in a certain way. Um, One of those ways is I feel like I'm more relatable to other people and like that I'm tolerant now of them. Because I realize that we all do things because of where we've come from, because of our damage, our childhoods, whatever. And just because I may not understand the way that a person acts... It's not my place. It's their it's their life. And so I'm now more relatable to um, things that people do that is maybe not things that I would necessarily do myself or yeah. things that I don't find right. I'm, I just understand that that's who they are. That's not who I am. And yeah. that helps you to be more self-aware. Yeah, it's like um, it's not ref- everything's not reflective on me, uh, you know. Yeah. It's like people have their own things. It, it's not necessarily... Something you did. Right. Yes, exactly. Uh, Also realizing that happiness is within you. You are the only person that controls your happiness. And I really think that even though this is a really simple thing to say, Mm -hmm. most people don't think about that. They don't think about you are the only one that has control over making you happy. No, I think a lot of us walk around think we're just victim of circumstance, meaning... We're in a world of motion, so whatever kind of comes along our way, we're at the mercy of that. Yes. When I kind of think it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. You're sort of forging your path. Yes. And you will come across things. They will not come across you. You are the one moving. We all have our own path and journey, but I'll tell you that one of the things that was very important... And my journey was learning to be happy by myself. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're codependent, if you come from that kind of background, that learning to be happy by yourself is very important before you can be happy with somebody else. I had to have a time between when I got divorced and when you and I started dating that I could learn about myself and and figure myself out and and all the things that come with that because I learned to love myself for who I am. Because if you don't, it's really hard to let somebody else love you the way that you're supposed to be loved. So having that time is very important and it's it can be scary. And a lot of people that are codependent, you know, I, I've done this serial monogamy, one relationship to the next my entire life. It was only that short amount of time that I was able to have where I learned who I am and, and all of that on my own. Right. And I think that that's important for a lot of us. <laughs> I think it's a big reason why I started, you know, drawing at such a young age. And then music later was like, what, what do I do with this time with myself? Right. Because I can sit in my head. Yes. And think about all the bad things that have happened to me in my life up to that point. Yes. Or I can put myself in sort of a creative, meditative place where I still may have thoughts, but they're not always my thoughts. Right. Yeah, I agree with you. That's they were saying before in, in my notes here that, yeah, having that something 
right. something to do to keep your mind occupied, to keep you happy. Right. Because, yeah, that that really is where it is, is sitting inside of your head. Right. And you have to get out of your own head. And what's <clears throat> the other way that we can get out of our own head? And that's meditating. Mm-hmm. Um, that really, like, if, if you're stuck in that place where you're just unhappy and you can't pull yourself out of it, sometimes just meditating and getting out of your own head if you can't find something else to do. Because I know a lot of times, you know, people will say, oh, go watch something or go read a book or whatever. But our minds tend to like wander when we're doing yeah. those things as well. Yeah. And so meditating before we try and do those kinds of things can also help us to focus better. True. But it really does help um, with this as well, with the, with being happy. Meditation helps with everything. Yep. It's like it's like a magic drug that isn't a drug. <laughs> so many many people are like, I don't want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Why? I think because we don't promote it because I think it would solve so many issues that yeah, the world wouldn't really need half the things that they we need. But I, I'm telling you, almost everybody that I say you need to meditate to, they go, wah, wah, wah. Sometimes it does feel like, oh, it's like cleaning the bathroom. Like, what? But it feels so good afterwards. I know, it, does. it really does. Yeah. And yeah, I, I could preach about the, the meditating, but... Anyways, happiness is a choice. Yep. So you can hide in your shell or, you know, all of that. But happiness is much more than a smile or enjoying a beautiful sunset. It's a mental state that we desire and fear at the same time, actually, if you think about it. Yeah. Uh, Even though we may not realize that. But that's what being alive is about. We're meant to feel we're not put here for this to be easy no that's another thing that i had to grasp yeah it's part of that acceptance of this is is an experience yes there's nobody here no matter what it looks like on the outside Mm -hmm. there's nobody here that this journey is super easy for now dolores cannon i did see something where she said something about resting lives that some people like if you had a really traumatic life or something, you might go into the next one just looking for minor experiences and it might not be as traumatic as other people's. Yeah. But when we have all of these kinds of experiences, that's how we learn. That's how we mm-hmm. deal with, you know, our karma. There's so many things there. So like the more experiences that you have good and bad in this life, the quicker you kind of move through this whole process of, multiple lives because you know most people you say you're gonna come back here again and they're like no the issue is we forget i think um from this side or this angle multiple lives sounds daunting and like "Ah." yeah but on that side because you now understand your eternal existence you get bored yeah you do I, i think i think you really want the stimulation and let's face it being in a body is pretty cool. Yeah. Because there's food. <laughs> yes. There's sex. Yes. There's drugs. Yes. Not going to lie. <laughs> um, there's just so much. Yeah. That you can't experience on that side. That side, though, is perfection. Yes. It is complete, utter love and happiness and not all the emotion and the body. Yes. And the gravity and all that. So it's like two different places, but both amazing in itself. Right. In their own way. The challenge here in this life is not how much money can you make. It's not how popular can you be. It's it's nothing like that. It's um, it's this biggest challenge, I think, is to be happy. Yeah. No matter what we face. Not like we're supposed to, you know, the worst thing happens to us. Not like I get the call, you know, oh, your mom died. And I'm just supposed to be like, oh, cool, right on. Yeah. Not that. You deal with it and then right. you move on. You don't sit in it. You know, you just deal. and then Yeah, it's not. The on. point is to not get to, um, this life sucks, man. This is a waste. Yeah, we don't. Uh-huh. No, uh-huh. the point is to always see it as a gift, no matter what's happening the whole experience as a whole is a gift it is yes and a lot of the things that we look at as taking away our happiness are really just normal things that come with life Mm -hmm. and death is one of those things it's probably one of the heaviest 
if not the heaviest. It is. Even when it's expected, it's still very heavy. I work with it every day, and it does suck a, the <clears throat> happiness out of a lot of people. But that's also a part of the journey and a part of the growth is how much are you going to let it suck you? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I realize now that with my mom, I, I should have done things differently. Can't go back and change that right. now. Um, so, you know, I'll learn in the future. But the separation, like I said before, the separation of two souls by physical death connects those souls greater. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I, and that happens for every one of us. Yeah, absolutely. And really, like, I know that I have these abilities and so I can talk to my mom and all of that. But even before I knew about the abilities, I still knew that she was there all the time. And I, because the signs were just amazing. And I feel like I spend more time with her now than I ever did when she was alive or ever would have when she was alive. Yeah. And it's more of a pure relationship. It's not based off of issues and right. problems and all of that it's and that's what our loved ones want to do for us they want us to realize that we are they are still around us and they want us to be happy and they're trying to you know show us that right and be happy right alongside with us and yeah. it's not easy but um i want to try and help people to see that that they're right there with you to, yep. to help you through this they really are yeah yeah the universe is amazing. i mean just the fact that Alice, you know, Gabe's mom is sitting there going, I'm I'm visiting family functions and listening to you guys tell BS stories that you don't even know the truth to. They're around. Yeah. They're, it's just a dimensional thing that yes. they're at a vibration you can't be seen. Exactly. And the whole thing here is your vibration. Yeah. You know, what, what do you allow to make you happy and unhappy? Yes. Um, and everybody has a right to be unhappy at times. Mm-hmm. That's just part of it. Yeah. But denying yourself happiness because of the reality of unhappy moments right. is robbing yourself, you know? Right. And a lot of those unhappy moments actually lead to happier moments. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, divorce. You might be uh, in the the pit, like what Nancy was talking about. You might feel like, oh, this is never going to get better and Mm -hmm. I'm always going to be stuck here. But this is just the now. That's not down the road. And you'll look back Mm -hmm. at it and you'll go, wow, I've come so far and, and that's not my issue anymore. Now I have something else. No, that's so true. It's like that old saying that when one door closes, another one seems to open. It's true. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, and it's just um, another phase of something. Right. I really, and I think that those moments that the universe tests us, you know, to see, are you really happy? What are you going to do with this? Right. Those are moments that we're meant to learn. And those are what push us along. (coughs) So a lot of those hard times that we go through where we're feeling unhappy Those are tests, and they are moving us along to other better things as well. And sometimes you can't see that until in retrospect. Yeah. But but our goal here really is to be happy. It's not he with the most toys. He who dies with the most toys wins. It's not that at all. It's what are you going to do with these experiences while you're here? And we should all experience that. Yeah. Happiness, because that's part of it. Yep. I have this vision that I've had since the beginning of the spiritual journey of me standing on this hill. And I don't know really context behind it, but one of the things that I saw in the vision from the beginning was the Bronco, Uh which this was long before the Bronco was even that they even said they were Ford was coming out with another Bronco that I saw this car. Uh, And I hear at this time, are you happy? And I say yes i'm i'm happy i am and i'm asked this a lot on this journey and i'm supposed to answer it very truthfully and i always do of what are the areas that i'm not happy in and what could use the work and a lot of the times it's just the things on myself that like this that i need to deal with inside it's not something on the outside that i can fix it's just something within myself that i need to work on and that's so I feel like once I've done that, then I will be asked that. Are you happy? And I will be finally ready, confident enough to say that without worrying about something happening. Right. I'm looking forward to that day. 
and sharing that with everybody when it happens. Cool. Yeah. Me too. So there you go, everybody. Let's try and go out and be happy this week. Yeah. Try to put your worries aside a little bit. Don't worry. Be happy. Yes. I used to sing that song to my grandma. Great she song. Thought it was annoying, but I think it was. Betty thinks it's annoying. She's like, "Don't <laughs> sing it." Betty thinks everything we do is annoying. Yeah, yeah, but she chooses to lay here the whole time. She does, and she's like, "Stop talking!" If you can hear, it. She, this ah. is a good episode for you, Betty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. All right then. Well, before we say goodbye, would you like to share your information one more time? Yeah. Oh, and just a real quick shout out because I did mention Marina's birthday, but I didn't say happy birthday. Happy birthday. Love you. You are an adult now. That's yes. weird. Very yes, weird. Love you. All right. Go ahead. Info. Okay. So Samantha Jones Psychic Medium dot com. You can find it all there. And Great. then don't forget to message me to let me know you want to enter for that free reading. Oh yeah. yeah. Beyond the bridge eleven at gmail dot com. Very cool. And you, sir. Yes, one more time for my art, djonesrcollection.com for the web, at djonesrcollection for Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. And I did start a photography Instagram, if you're interested, just yesterday or a couple days ago. It's djones71photography. Nice. On Instagram. So, awesome. yeah, I've been saving pictures I've been taking, so I was like, why am I just saving them? Yeah, put them up. Yep. They're awesome. So that's it for me. Yay. Well, we hope everybody got something out of this like Samantha said, go out, be happy. Don't worry. Don't worry, be happy. And we hope you guys have a great week. That we do. And until next week, peace and love. love.